Welcome back. Welcome back to An Athlete's Journey. I'm your host, Travis Reed. Today, I got a special, special guest, somebody I, you know, recently met, but like, man, he is doing big things. Uh, good, good guy. Like I said, I uh, met him recently at the UCLA uh, football games. You know, I, my first time meeting him was at US, UCLA USC, and I was like, man, I got to get his story, you know, on to the people. <laughs> because uh it's it's a it's, it's a great one to listen to so i want to be the introduce be the first to introduce you know a friend of mine mr nate uh nate Vire. i appreciate you for coming on nate man i appreciate you for real thanks brother i appreciate it good to be here no 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 but like i said so uh we're gonna get right into it you know uh this is going to be something a little bit different. Like I said, Nate is, has a special story because he didn't really play organized sports all the way until college uh, before he walked on at uh, TCU. So we're going to ask, like, did you play any sports growing up as far as uh, football, basketball, baseball, anything like that, like on a team or in the league or just was just straight for fun? No, I didn't. You know, I played I played baseball and basketball growing up. Um, not, you know, you met me, not the biggest guy in the world. <laughs> um, and I was never a great athlete. I was always like a like a decent, like a good athlete that, you know, played really hard. You know, I, I was you know, the guy that got like the coaches award, you know, um, stuff kind of that, like kind of like that. Like, uh, you know, I was the sixth man on the basketball team. And uh, I mean, baseball was bad. I was better at baseball, but I liked basketball more. I think because it moved faster, more people went to the games when we were in high school. No one really went to high school baseball games, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was when I was uh, in like middle school, I was interested in football, but just didn't end up happening uh, for me. I was like, I'll play later. I'll play when I'm in high school. And then I ended up graduating from high school. Didn't even have a football team, so I just never played. And I regretted it because it's my it's my favorite sport. I mean, I love I love the game. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan first and foremost. And I grew up in the Bay Area uh in the you know in the 80s and 90s so uh being a Niners fan it was really good good time uh, I mean they they won a lot of games they won five Super Bowls and uh yeah not until I was 29 years old did I did I try out and, and walk on at Texas and end up playing man that's a heck of a story man like for real so well, I guess my question for you would be what, what what gave you the courage to kind of finally take that step to try to even walk off uh, I mean, it was my time in the military, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was earning the green beret, you know, going to Iraq, spending time uh, overseas and um, just building confidence, but also understanding and learning work ethic and like what, what you kind of have to sacrifice to be elite at anything. And also that you don't need to be, you don't need to have the most God given talent, uh, to, to play at the highest level or to compete at anything at the highest level, you just have to outwork everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was willing to do. And, you know, I, I didn't have that mentality before. I was always a big dreamer. I had a lot of dreams and aspirations, but I didn't, didn't put the time in necessary. You know, I didn't do the reps, didn't do the work. Um, I didn't prioritize that. It's like, if that's your dream, if your dream is something uh, that's pretty competitive, mm -hmm. you're going to have to, unfortunately, you're just gonna have to sacrifice a lot of stuff, you know, and, and uh, and prioritize your life in a different way and sometimes that comes with sacrifices you don't want to make or that aren't conventional to life um but it is what it is it's like you either choose you choose one or the other I mean, it's up to you uh you know we're lucky to live in a place where you do get to make those choices for the most part you know you have that opportunity it's not different i mean it's, you know it's different for everybody uh, what, what that opportunity looks like we're not all on the same level playing field, but we all do have a chance. And uh, yeah, it just not until I served and, and, and realized that so much of what we do in life is just put limitations on ourselves and kind of, we tap, we talk ourselves out of things more than people, even more than people, you know, the naysayers that, that, you know, make us feel like we're, we're not good enough. It's more about ourselves getting in our own way. That's very true. That's very true. Did you go into the military straight out of high school or was that a little bit later on? In yeah, life? a little bit later on. I, I I moved after high school. I moved to San Diego. So I grew up in the Bay. Oh, I said that. Grew up in the Bay. After high school, I moved to San Diego for about a year and I worked on a fishing boat, uh, did all kinds of odd jobs, different stuff. And then after uh, about a year, I moved up to Los Angeles 
with an interest in film and TV. I mean, that's why I moved up there. I wanted to work in that industry. Um, and, and then a year after I moved to LA is when 9-11 happened. Uh, so I was 20 years old. I didn't join right away, but it got me thinking about it for sure. And, right. you know, I just, I thought, I thought, I, what am I doing in the world? Like, I, I feel like I didn't, I hadn't gone to college. I hadn't really pursued anything. I just didn't feel like very purposeful. And like both my parents were pretty accomplished uh, mm -hmm. as far as, I mean, they worked their butts off, man. They both went to graduate school and, you know, work, work full time their whole lives. And I mean, my dad almost double time uh, to provide for us and all that stuff. And it's like, not that I needed to have a family anytime soon, but I was like, what am I doing? Like what? I feel like I I just have no, no direction at all. And, uh, and so I ended up doing some relief work in, uh, in the Darfur region of Sudan, uh, in 2004. And it really just changed my perspective on, uh, what's important and also different ways to be of service to people that don't have, you know, what I was fortunate <laughs> to have. So, uh, I came back to the States signed up for the military and, and left that year. So that's, that's in uh, 2004. Oh, when, okay. Yeah. So I, I was 23 years old when I signed up. So not super old, but definitely older than the average person in basic training. Oh, well, I mean, hey, like I said, I understand that. I was a army, well, not a, I was a military brat growing up. You know, my father was in the air force mm -mm. For, the, for the first like 12, eight, eight years of my life. He was in middle, he was in the air force for 12 years. I was, you know, eight years. Yeah. Right. So we right. were sta stationed, you know, North Dakota, Sacramento, you know, so we was like all over growing up until right. he retired. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> but no, I've, I've always respected anybody in the military, you know. So so after you get out, after you get out of the military, you decide to go to college. Um, now you're in college. Like I said, you, we already discussed that you, you know, you, you tried, you know, you walked on on Texas. And uh, you know, made the team. And after that, how did you get to the NFL as far as like playing for the for the you know year that you played? Uh, so I, I, I my sophomore year at Texas, my fir first year, I walked on as a safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just wasn't like I said, I just wasn't I wasn't the athlete that was going to be able to keep up with those receivers, and you know, not only the learning curve of a new game, a new sport, but also you know, I mean, I, the fastest I ever ran was like in the high four sevens. Like I'm not a fast guy, you know, compared to a lot of these, these people. Right. And uh, so that's pretty that's fast I, though. I was going to say that's pretty fast. Four sevens. Pretty for the fast. average, average, average person. I mean, you know, when I, when I, when I, <laughs> after I put all the weight on and got ready for the NFL combine, I couldn't even break five seconds, man. It was getting, it was getting slow. <laughs> I, 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 I packed it on so I could block better, you know, but mm -hmm. anyway, so I started my sophomore year, I started long snapping just to find a way on the field. And I ended up winning the starting job. And I started for three years at Texas as a long snapper. You know, and I was in my early 30s when I was in college playing. Um, and the thing about long snapping is like it's it's one of the few positions on the football field that you can be a little bit older, you can be a little bit less athletic, a little bit smaller, as long as you're super consistent. I mean, I equate it to shooting free throws, you know, like it's a, it's a closed skill in that regard. It, it, yeah. The situation's different, but every time you shoot a free throw, it's 15 feet away and nobody's guarding you. You know what I mean? It's the mm -hmm. same long snap in a football. It's 15 yards on punt, eight yards on extra point field goal to the same punter, the same holder on the same, you know, grass field or turf field or whatever in the same spot. Granted, doing it in practice and doing it for a game winning field goal, you know, are different situations or backed up in your own end zone. And you got to have a perfect snap for the punt. You got all this pressure things, you know, different situation, but the snap is the same. So as long as you can like get past all the mental stuff and just be consistent, be accurate, get some good zip on it. And then don't be a liability as far as blocking people. And as far as running down, trying to make a tackle, you don't have to be, you know, Von Miller out there. You just got to be, <laughs> you can be Nate, you know, you just got to be, uh, you got to be all right. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's sort of, that's how I found my, my spot on the field. It was just that niche that like willing to do a thankless job um, is what, what got me the, 
the opportunity uh, to play at Texas and same with the Seahawks. Seahawks. Uh, I played in a senior all-star game my last year and a bunch of NFL scouts were there. And some of the, some of them told me, Hey, like, I mean, I weighed about 195 pounds at the time. They're like, you have to put on some weight, but you know, you should go for it. You're a good snapper. You're still in good health and good condition. Um, why not? And so I did, I, I, I put on about 30 pounds in four months. Wow. Um, crazy. Dude, I was eating everything uh, <laughs> at all hours. Uh, I and, imagine. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And it was different too. Cause I was, when I was in college, I was still in the military, still on, uh, still in national guard. So I would go on active duty in the summertime. They'd send me overseas. I go to Afghanistan, <laughs> and, you know, I'm over there, like just burning calories nonstop. So it was, I was always a hard gainer. It was always hard for me to keep that weight up anyway, when I was in college, mm-hmm. now that I was out of the military and I was specifically training for this opportunity in the NFL from January to May, I just, you know, I put on, I put on all that weight uh, and I stopped doing, you know, anything, like distance wise type cardio, you know what I mean? I was just mm-hmm. doing just short sprints, power lifting, you know, snapping, doing blocking drills. And like, that was it. But um, trying to stay in shape and gain muscle and get stronger, but, but, you know, stay uh, and stay relatively lean, but, but I had to pack that weight on. I was the only way I was gonna get a chance. So, so Pete Carroll um, ended up calling me the last day of the draft and offered me uh a free agent contract. I had to pick between the Seahawks and the St. Louis Rams. And at the time, man, like the Rams were four and 12. The Seahawks have been to back-to-back Super Bowls. I would much <laughs> rather have gone to Seattle than St. Louis. And it just made sense. So I, I didn't really, I felt like I didn't have a choice. I was like, ah, I got to go this way. Even though it's a tougher <laughs> team to make, but I just couldn't turn that down, you know? No, I definitely understand that. I feel like, um, you know, like you just you just seen the Seahawks on on television, you know, yeah. uh, playing the Patriots, and then obviously year before playing the Broncos. So yeah, yeah, I can I can understand that. I can exactly. Understand. No, I mean, like <laughs> right after that, you know, that crazy Malcolm Butler interception where they should have gave the ball to Marshawn. Oh yeah, and, every <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but yeah, <laughs> they know. I mean, it's a thing. Everybody talks about it, you know. So yeah. Okay, so he calls you, you get a free agent contract. Now, I did want to have, I did have a question for you. I know this is maybe kind of crazy, but what was harder to uh, excel at? Was it like military uh, or like maybe the NFL, like trying to make a team? You know, what was I mean, they're going? completely different in the sense of like the level of athlete and the competitiveness in the, in the, in football, especially at the NFL level. That's way harder. I mean, the it's a power, speed, you know, that kind of stuff. What What's tougher about the military is obviously, first of all, the stakes are higher. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I mean, it course. could be life and death. But then also, like, it's just grueling, like the endurance. You have to have so much endurance. Um, I mean, you know, I had a, a, one one time in training with a, with a you know, 45-pound rucksack on plus – other equipment carrying a rifle around through the woods doing land navigation and it was you know 40 plus miles uh through through the mountains and you know in 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 like we crossed like three or four different state lines you know what i mean like wow Wow. you're just like in the sticks uh doing that so like most people would never even like try to do that or never even like whereas a lot of people they might other people might uh you know give football a shot or something mm-hmm. but it's just it's just different and uh the attrition rate's really high for for the military thing um but a I man I guess it definitely is in the nfl as well like just to, just to even get an opportunity to try in the nfl is, is, right. is harder um but yeah so they're just very different they're both they're both extremely challenging that's for sure <laughs> i got you i got you so you go to seattle uh you you make the team um I guess, you know, my question for you is uh, explain your experience, you know, explain your time in, in Seattle. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was awesome just to, you know, just to, I played in one preseason game, um, but I was in OTAs, training camp, you know, some of the offseason stuff. I was there for about five months mm-hmm. um, just waiting to get cut every day. I was like, man, I'm going to get cut today. You know, <laughs> it's going to be my day. I mean, I was I was 34 years old. So I was the oldest guy on the team, but I was also the oldest rookie in in the in the modern era, I guess, of NFL history. And so 
it was like this crazy, you know, experience, uh, the locker room. I loved it. I mean, I think Seattle was a lot different than a lot of other NFL teams just because Pete, Pete Carroll's a college guy. So it yeah. had that younger energy, even though I think he's the oldest coach in the league now, which is crazy to me. Yeah. He's yeah, so yeah. young. Cause he's running around chomping that gum. Like, you know, he's always got a, <laughs> He's always positive. Like, that's just how he is, you know, and um, and it's good. I mean, it breeds a good culture. But it it was just a very different um, – yeah, something I never thought I would get to experience and grateful to to get the chance to play, even though it was just one game. It was, it was awesome. I'll never forget it. It opened a lot of doors, too. It really did, you know. Um, just the stuff I wanted to do after with the, you know, with the film and TV stuff. Yeah, and that, and that and that that's leading me into my next question for you. Um, so obviously, you 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 play the one, you know, you play with Seattle. You're in camp. You do, you know, you you do all that. So, what was next after, after uh, you know the Seahawks? Yeah, so I got I got released, um, and after the first preseason game, they had like the next big round of cuts, and my number just came up. Um, so I only got to play in one, but it was great. I mean, I I played really well actually for me. I mean. I was long snapping, so it's not that crazy, but all my snaps were good. And, you know, I did a good job. And, uh, but, you know, that was, that was, it was my time. So I moved back down to Los Angeles. I had met Jay Glazer uh, a few months prior because he'd helped train me and get me that opportunity in Seattle. And we ended up forming this charity called MVP, which stands for Merging Vets and Players. Um, Because for me, you know, I had lost both the military uh, uniform that camouflage and I lost my jersey in the same year 2015 mm-hmm. and it was like I went from having this structure and purpose and all those things I was talking about earlier when I was younger that I felt like I didn't have and being a part of a team and you know having those guys in the locker room to having none of that and just feeling like man what do I do now I'm 34 I gotta start all over like I have no idea <laughs> um, and, and I was yeah. still into like the film and TV stuff, but I hadn't really ever started it. You know, that was something that came to me 15 years ago and I'm still, I'm still, I'm about to take the first step. And Jay was like, well, that's great. You should do that. You should pursue that. But in the meantime, let's also, let's start this nonprofit and bring these groups together and help them through the same journey you're going through right now and trying to transition and find the next phase of life. And mm-hmm. so we started MVP, which, which stands for merging vets and players. And we bring together combat vets and former professional athletes. We help them find purpose and identity when they lose a uniform. Um, We started in LA at the end of 2015. We've got eight chapters now around the country, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. So we're in LA, Las Vegas, Chicago, Atlanta, New York, Seattle, Dallas, and Phoenix. Um, And we work with a lot of pro sports teams, but also, and, and, former players from those teams, but also a lot of veterans, you know, a lot of uh, people in the military community. Uh, And we meet up in the gym every week. We train together for about 40, 45 minutes. And then we huddle up on the wrestling mats afterwards. And it's just like an open forum. Like you can talk about whatever you want. And we're here to there. We're here to like support each other. Um, But if you got some heavy stuff going on or something you're struggling with, like bring it up, let's talk about it. And we'll, we'll talk through it and try to, you know, try to help each other. So it's really just about having each other's back and, you know, I mean, you you know when you leave <clears throat> when you leave something like that and enter the real world, it just feels like it's very different. The dynamics are different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, the way you have to communicate with people is different. It's just not the same. It's even it's that times ten in the military because it's like we're, you know, we talk a certain way. Um, we expect a lot out of people, and sometimes when expectations aren't met, we don't react in the most positive way you know, <laughs> right, or, or, right, or right. PC way. And it's like, you gotta, you gotta find a way to transition back to this, to this world, which is different, you know? And it's, it's, it's just like, not that you have to be so sensitive all the time, but you just have to understand people don't have your experience. They didn't go through what you went through, you know, and on the sports side, same thing. Like they never, most people never been part of an elite team uh, that's out there, like, you know, given everything they have um, to, to, to try to reach this ultimate goal. It's just mm. not everybody gets to have that experience. We're very lucky. So even though it ends and some of us, it ends quick and early, some of us yeah. wait yeah. for a very long time. And even then, even those guys, well, I guarantee you when Tom Brady, that's why Tom Brady's playing again this year. <laughs> he missed it, man. He tried to retire the greatest of all time and he couldn't even do it. He's like, yeah. I just miss it too much. It's, it's hard, you know? Yeah. So it doesn't matter um, if you play for five minutes like me or, you know, 
25 years like Tom Brady's probably going to, it's it's tough to move on. No, I agree with you. And that's in every sport. I mean, I'll give a perfect example uh, of a lot of NBA dudes, like the example of Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan had the greatest finish. He could have had the greatest finish or one of the greatest finishes of all time, hitting the last shot against Utah, um, winning his six championships. And he was just like, I miss it too much. I'm, I got to come back and play for the Washington yeah. Wizards, you know. Or even, yeah. Magic, yeah, you know, Magic Johnson coming back out of retirement after like seven years off, you know, and playing in like 1995. And so even the great ones kind of have a hard oh, time. With yeah. These guys like uh, Bo Jackson and Herschel Walker, they're like in their late 40s, early 50s. And they're talking about like, I'm training. I think I can still play. And they're talking <laughs> about coming back. I'm like, I'm sure you could maybe but like why <laughs> yeah know? there's no purpose man. there's you no know, reason why? just besides you miss it now yeah. yeah maybe I, not bo jack maybe i'm just thinking of herschel not bo but anyway because i know bo had that that hip injury that yeah cut his yeah. Career way short but mm -hmm. you know it's it, it is it's very common i mean jordan's an interesting one in the sense of like oh by the way shout out uh yeah. <laughs> jordan's an interesting uh one in the sense of like he won three nba titles and i think my opinion is he didn't feel challenged enough mm -hmm. because, and he, that's why he went to baseball. He's like, I need a new challenge. I need mm -hmm. like, I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, I don't want everybody chasing me. I want to chase somebody else for a bit, you know? And so he went and did baseball, you know, for a couple of years or whatever, obviously it didn't, uh, it didn't materialize much, you know? I mean, he was very talented, but it's, that's so hard. Like in a whole, totally, totally different sport. You haven't played for years. Mm -hmm. coming back and doing that so then he goes back you know wins three more and then just like you said like the most iconic finish um you know crossing up uh who was that byron byron russell yeah crossing up brian russell mm -hmm. hitting that jump shot and then yeah then then just keeps playing <laughs> keeps playing you know, what I'm saying? Years, but, you know? Now I say, I'm, I'm gonna come back and not even go back to the bulls i'm gonna go play for the washington wizards yeah. So, you know, I, it's just, I think it's really hard. I mean, Tom, he signed a, you know, 10, what was it, 10-year deal with Fox already? $375 yeah. Oh, yeah. million. Dollars. So, yeah, like the biggest broadcasting contract ever. And ever. And he's just like, nah, I think I'm going to hold off on that. And I'm yeah, gonna play. that's the way the deal is structured. It's like whenever you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So That's literally what they said, like whenever you're ready. Whenever you know? you're ready. Like, you know what, I'm going to hold off on that. And I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to play another year. And I feel like for some reason, I think he's going to play another year. <laughs> I think he's yeah. going to play, you know, for some reason, they're, I don't know they're why. On the, they're on the ropes right now, man. I don't know if you've been following them. But no, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. Today in overtime yeah. to the Browns. They're five and six. Like, they got to start winning or they ain't going to make the playoffs. And, like, what now, a you division. Look, now you look at a situation where two years ago you won the Super Bowl mm -hmm. with a new team. Great opportunity to ride out on that white horse and just say, you know, I told you I could do it on a different team. Like, you know, <laughs> but he didn't do it. He stayed another year. They, I think they, they you know, but they did all right last year. They know, made the playoffs. They, like, they all right, all right, right. I'm going to retire now. Okay, good. Still good. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and now you got this situation where he's having his worst season statistically. They're five and six. You never know. It's Tom Brady. They could totally flip it all of a sudden. And, you know, who knows? Yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see. I don't think so. Don't, you know, I think, if they don't, it's like, dude, not you had like your it's, like, it's gonna be like his first career losing season. Yeah, like, all, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want that. No, I agree. With you. I think they're gonna be like, you know, like nine and eight, and they'll probably win the division because the division is terrible. That's true. That's you true. Know what they, and then they end up hosting the playoff game, and then we'll go from there. But it's my Niners you know, beat the Saints today, so I'm sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, yeah, no, the Niners, yeah, they're, they're ridiculous. So yeah, yeah. Oh, with yeah. the McCaffrey pickup, look out! Yeah, only only thing y'all only thing y'all haven't picked up is the Avengers. I mean, you know, so <laughs> yeah. you got first team all running back, first team all all running, you know, tight end, first team all pro wide receiver, first team all pro left tackle, DN, <laughs> you know, defense, Dude, first team. Oh so, my come God. on. yeah, you need to you got a squad, man. You got the got Avengers, you got the Avengers right now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah they're good. <laughs> so yeah, um, with but definitely. <laughs> Maybe Brady goes there. You never know. <laughs> he should have. He could have. Yeah, could've yeah. Taken. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, I definitely um feel like you know what you did as far as like moving into that MVP phase.
because I was struggling myself after I retired from overseas uh, basketball. I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. Right. Uh, you know, I had a three-year-old son at the time and I was just like, uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't necessarily want to coach, but I need money. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I have to figure this thing out. So, right. you know, so it was a struggle, but yeah. Um, but as far as yourself, like you obviously you had the acting thing, you know, going, uh, but and obviously you had the nonprofit going. Did the nonprofit um, lead you back into acting or you were still kind of pursuing that on the side? Yeah, I mean, I, I <clears throat> yeah, not necessarily. Like the nonprofit was just something that was, it's always important to have things in your life that don't feel like they just serve you. And, I, and you know, and a lot of the stuff in film and TV, as much as I love it, and you can, you know, you can tell some stories, be a creative storyteller, uh chain you know help change the world in certain ways you know uh mm -hmm. you could do a lot of positive work with that it still doesn't feel like you're giving so much and so from the mvp side it was important to feel like i'm doing a part of that too and i'm there for other people and you know allow them to be there for me too um and then it just so happened that those two things came together because you know i'd started uh i wanted to you know i wanted to eventually have my own production company and eventually maybe try to, to write and direct something and all that. And I was getting some acting gigs, but not a ton, you know, uh, here and there getting some stuff and probably not as into acting as I was the idea of, um, you know, being behind the camera and making stuff. So eventually uh, the opportunity came up with telling the story of MVP, how it all started. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we made this movie and, um, so this is my first time directing my first time co-writing something that got made. I had produced some stuff in the past and, you know, that were unscripted project, like things I was hosting or, uh, you know, projects like that, that are kind of docu-series around sports, but nothing like a movie. So this was a big, uh, shift and a big opportunity. And I decided to just go all in on it, you know, and just really go for it. And so we did, and, uh, it's been awesome. I mean, we, we had like a bit of a theatrical release two months ago. So we were in some theaters for a couple of months. Now it's available. Uh, MVP is available on Amazon Prime and Apple TV and all these other places. People can watch it. Uh, it's a story about a Marine who was living in a homeless shelter and an NFL player first year out of the league. And they're both going through the same struggles of losing that uniform, losing that identity and trying to help each other through it. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, it you know, it's it, it was awesome. And we shot this thing in the middle of covid uh, all the veterans portrayed on screen are played by actual veterans. Most of the athletes played by real athletes. I mean, Tony Gonzalez, Hall of Fame tight end, Randy Couture, one of the greatest UFC fighters of all time. Um, Jared Bunch, NFL alumni, uh, played for four years with the New York Giants. Um, uh, you know, Rich Eisen, uh, yeah, Jake Laser. So Michael you know, Strahan in it, yeah. Yeah, Strahan and Howie Long have a cameo, yeah. which is really cool. Um it's just great to, to get to work with those people and have them kind of tell their own stories through this movie, mm -hmm. but it not be a documentary, it just kind of feel like it at times. So it was, yeah, it was, it, it's a very like raw, like authentic project, you know? No, no, definitely. Like I said, it, and people, you can check it out on Amazon prime, just type in MVP and it's right there. Trust me. It's uh you know, it's an exciting movie. I'm I'm already uh excited. I was I was like I told him I told Nate the other day, I was like, man, I'm super excited. And then I saw the preview up and I was like, oh <laughs> it looked real proper, you know. And sure. uh, you know, it's definitely something that's right up my alley because I know how the football player feels. Right. And, you know, even in some ways I know how the military, you know, person feels with my father, right. you know, after he retired, he had to figure out what he was gonna do with with a family, you know, right uh, after he, you know, he retired from the military. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm you know, like I said, I'm beyond excited, you know, uh, to watch it. And, you know, you will get my critique, you know, I'll be sending you a Good. text, you Good. know. <laughs> I want your honesty. I know you know that world, so. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely, mm -hmm. man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. <laughs> so what are any, what are the new things that that's, that's coming right now, Nate? So I got a few more projects coming up, a few more. Uh, a couple more films I'm working on. There are ways off before we start shooting. But besides that, you know, back in September of this year, I uh, I hosted a Discovery Channel series. It'll be coming out in the summertime. 
Um, that's sort of like a survivor type show, which will be fun. Okay. Uh, so okay. we got that coming up. Um, and otherwise, you know, MVP, the organization, the charity keeps growing and that's all good stuff. But, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's really what I want to do. I can't wait to get back behind the camera and, and shoot another movie. Like that's, there's nothing like it for me. Cause it feels like just like, uh, in the military, you know, obviously not in combat, but like a training mission where you got all these different departments and department heads and like people you got to like coordinate with and work with. And every day something goes wrong and you got to problem solve and figure it out quick because, mm. you know, money's getting spent by the second. And uh, and you just have to, you know, it's very creative, um, but it's kind of this like creative chaos that, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, not that it doesn't matter, but you're like, this is, it's just, it, this isn't that big of a deal. Like it's all going to be okay. Uh, but at the same time, you have that stress that kind of uh, I relate to and, and kind of enjoy on some level, like a, a, a an element of that, um, you know, you got to, you got to figure this thing out or it's all going to fall apart, you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you got to rally together with your team and figure it out. And like, I don't know. I just, I love that feeling. Um, and, uh, and just make, you know, creating stuff, getting stuff done kind of proving people wrong like you know i don't know all of those feelings are are kind of exciting but also telling an important story like you know shifting people's perspective uh and and, and maybe changing a narrative that 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 uh, is mis misled misleading or mistold in the past so mm -hmm. it's just a it's a cool opportunity to be able to do that stuff and um yeah i i enjoy it i'm lucky to be able to call that work you know what i mean no no definitely i mean you know, being such a, like I said, behind the scenes, but like, you know, like you said, they spending money by the second. I feel like it's, it's pressure, but if you're loving what you're doing and it's not pressure, you know? So, right. 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 You no. Know, yeah. So it's definitely some, I mean, you know, I've, I've never thought about it, but Hey, you never know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you're in the right city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, well, well, I want to say thank you so much, Nate. And I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I definitely wanted to, you know, uh, the fans of the show to get, get your story because I was like, man, this is just a crazy one. And like I said, you made that transition after, after, you know, sports and the military to, you know, be successful um, in what you're, all your endeavors that you are doing. Um, where can people find you? You know, your MVP place and you yeah, know, that, they can for MVP, um, beyond the movie. If you want to check out the nonprofit, you go to vetsandplayers.org. Um, and then myself, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, um, at Nate Boyer37. Uh, is it my handle for both of those? Um, I have a TikTok too, but I don't use it. <laughs> so I, I posted the trailer of the movie once. I don't really know how TikTok works exactly, but uh, yeah, I really usually it's in, in Instagram is mostly what I'm on Instagram, and Twitter, but uh, yeah, it, at Nate Boyer thirty seven. Okay, well, like I said, I appreciate you, Nate. Um, you can find me at at Travis W Reed. That's R E E D on Instagram. I uh, post all my social media and all that. Uh, also on Facebook, Travis W Reed. Same thing, R E E D. I do have a TikTok as well, Travis Reed, and I just post, you know, uh, basically videos of the show. <laughs> I don't right. really use it as much as the other two. But, uh, yeah, so, and then also, if you're looking for any uh, merch, I have a Travis Reed, Athlete's Journey uh, merch. Uh, just hit me up, uh, DM me uh, on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll, I'll respond to you, and I'll send, it, I'll send you out the information. All right. Awesome, brother. All right. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. <laughs>